This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees and I'm thrilled to welcome back La Shai. La, welcome back to This and That. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So this is our second try, as I think some of the skaters in Skate America uh, would want to have, because my energy level when I came back from the trip was a little bit um, down. We talked for a long time, so it's better we're doing this again. Yeah, it was I, like, it was over two hours. So there's much to discuss, but we need to talk about our fantasy scores. How many points did you get last week? Because we're, we're going against Team Dave and Team Law. Is this your way of publicly humiliating me? I mean, maybe. You did go to Penn, right? So what did, what did you get? I want to hear this. 58 points. So yeah. I got 105 points. So does that mean that I'm in, like, the Ivy League of Fantasy? Yes. All right. Oh, I'm so terrible at it. I think I'm just too, I don't know, like, too negative. Like, I listened to the interviews, and then, so I listened to the Ice Network, podcast with where they interviewed diva wagner yes. and she's like you know last year i peaked at skate i was like so good at skate canada and then my the rest of my grand prix was bad and then like she, she was very you need to go back and watch skate canada and see how good you really think that she was i know but well no that would have helped me if i had been like oh she's gonna peak too early but she's like i'm gonna do a better job pacing myself this season so i was like oh okay she's not gonna be very good here because she's all about wait pacing how many times did Sasha tell us that she had figured out her inconsistency over the summer in her journal entries? Correct. So I had Diva Wagner in third. My, my ladies was a hot mess. The only thing... Who did you have winning? My fantasy was the only thing worse than the pairs in that year. <laughs> okay. Well... I think I need to bring in, like, a consultant or an advisor. Okay. So... My mother-in-law is really into fantasy football. Okay. And, like, we have this family league called Cheese Curds. And <laughs> she's, like, really into it. Like, she listens to, like, the serious mm -hmm. XM station. On Anyway, she's won a lot. She showed us her trophies on her iPad. And she doesn't know this, but I could care less about fantasy football. So I have my brother, who's also into it, like totally manage my Which league. brother, the hot brother or the one that's in the Anthony Weiner documentary? <laughs> no, the older one, Jed. So he totally manages it. Like, I don't even look at it. Um, and I'm winning. Mm. So... You're going to need help for next week. Come on now. But you know yeah. who doesn't need help is Katie Locke. Katie Locke won fantasy with 149 points. And this is just some interesting stats. She was team Dave. She was also team Alyssa Sisney. Oh, Alyssa Sisney is like always right. Okay. Good uh, to know. I was team Michael Buckley. All right. She made a pure in pride order. So always helpful. She only got two of the men's picks. One of the ladies picks two of the pairs picks, but she got five out of the six in dance and she got all four head to head matchups. So everything is important. And an interesting thing for next week, we're going to film a separate preview video, but next week, one of the events is going to be doubled because I thought that we needed to have more fun and fantasy this year. And we're going to have the daily double. And one of the events is going to be like triple points, everything. And like, even I don't know, but I told Dan what my ideas were. So I'm just know that like one of the events is going to be double points and that could be good or bad for any of us. And I don't know which event it's going to be. So it's not, it's, it's not like it's going to be the event that I'm good at. So right. I, I, that's, I, a fun, that's a fun twist. I like that. That's like when, um, American Idol, like, had added that twist where you could save someone. Yes. So we need to have some more twist. You know I like a good game show. So, Katie, so, if you're listening and you have some free time and want to <laughs> become my advisor, let me know. <laughs> yes. So let's discuss Skate America. There's a lot to discuss. A lot happened. A lot's continuing to happen on social media. Let's just get out with it. Lacey made a lot of comments at this event leading into it at the event let's start with it let's start with she said in the ice network podcast that you listened to that she didn't know whether or not she was going to compete this season 
right. in, in the Grand Prix. And she said that in several articles. So, yeah. yes, it was billed as a Ashley Gracie duo, but we knew Ashley. I, we knew Gracie was struggling. Yes. Going. And I had heard over the summer that she was struggling, and I know that she took time off. I mean, it said several articles that this. Yeah. She hasn't gone like fully into it, but if you put things together, she said that she was depressed. She said, you know, that she took time off. I heard that when she was training, you know, there was difficulty in the rink. It wasn't a good day every day. There were tears, you know, and I think that it was real. I also yeah. think that looking at her performance, it obviously was not great here. From her comments when she got off the ice, talking about the depression, not wanting to compete, Frank's comments, I really feel like they have not figured out what the problem is or what happened at Worlds. And obviously she says that Worlds was the root cause of her summer. And I, I don't know if that's firmly... I don't think that it's been fully examined yet. And I don't think that they fully examined what happened at Worlds. And I right. think that until they do, everything else is going to continue to be a problem. You know, I yeah. think that they're trying to put a Band-Aid on like the situation and try... And I want to ask you, because she made comments about her weight. You've been a female skater... First of all, how important is weight? And then what what do you think of this whole situation? Well, I mean, her comments were inter were really interesting to hear. I think go back and listen to Dave's interview with Christine Brennan uh, for more on that. And I thought that Gracie looked great. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not just saying that to be nice. If you looked at look at her from the Japan Open, mm -hmm. she looked heavier. She looked like she lost a lot of weight between then and Skate America, which I think is actually a little concerning that she can just drop weight. What is she doing to drop the weight that quickly? Um, but still, you need energy to jump and nutrients to stay healthy. Um, so the weight is not the issue. She didn't look tired in her free program. She looked trained. The issue was mental, not mm. physical. Yeah. Um, I thought that actually what Ashley Wagner had to say about Gracie was really interesting and very true. And that the bottom line here, my RX for Gracie mm -hmm. is that she needs to be happy off the ice mm -hmm. and and unless she's happy off the ice, she's not going to be happy on the ice. Mm -hmm. And this translates to everything. I think when you interviewed Marissa and Mervin a while ago, mm -hmm. Marissa talked about that when she was skating with Simon and when she broke up with Simon, she had to find her own happiness off the ice. Mm -hmm. That translates on the ice. And that's like applies to so many things. When I was skating, my coach always said, um, someone who works hard in school is going to work hard on the ice. You don't have mm -hmm. someone that like is a straight A student and then comes to the rank and totally slacks off. Yeah. Those things translate. So Gracie is clearly making this very big deal out of her disappointing worlds that you just got to wonder that she might be one of those skaters that needs to go to school or needs to or just do something where she has this life outside of skating to see that one bad performance doesn't really matter and that the world keeps spinning because right now it doesn't seem like she has that kind of perspective yeah i think that's true um especially because i know that i'm someone who has like had anxiety issues to, that leads to depression issues and i know that a couple of years ago when i got a call from jenny that she was going to take a break from tsl and focus on law school or trying to get into law school I was very stressed. I was stressed normally in my life. I was on bad medication that was making me actually more anxious. But it was, I got incredibly burned out, incredibly stressed. And it wasn't until I really like took maybe six months off and really like figured out everything that was going on that I could be like, oh, okay, this is not like, this is manageable. This is, you know, and, you know, to figure out. But it, it affected me on the ice as well. And I became, like, very tense, very nervous, and everything like that, because I was skating at that time. And I think it breeds... It, I think if you're having an issue that you're not happy... Right. And I would say that she's made a lot of comments about food, a lot of comments about, you know, being depressed, pressure, anxiety, perfectionism, that I think that that's a whole thing that she needs to figure out. 
And I think right. that she really kind of needs it to figure it out away from competition. Because I think that this summer was the time to figure that out, but it sounds like it wasn't figured out and you know not not everything always gets figured out like in a nice little time schedule where you could be like yeah I'm gonna take a two-week vacation everything is gonna be fine like it doesn't work like that so I really think that she needs to take the Grand Prix off at the bare minimum she's not she's unlikely to make the final uh you talked to Christine a little bit about the broken record and when you start having bad performances it it it's a bad cycle. It's a bad pattern that keeps repeating itself. Uh, and I think she needs to break that. What do you think good. about? Yeah, I agree. And it's also, I mean, worlds, of course, that has to be very disappointing for her, like winning the short. But it's not like that was her only bad performance. No, so, this has been a problem for a long time. Right. And you can also see she's one of those skaters, and you really see this with her four continents mm-hmm. for- that if you she's the type of skater that's not happy doesn't want to be there she doesn't skate well like has she ever done well at four continents no but and but she said that she part of the reason why she felt heavy at four continents again the weight is so tied into how she feels about herself and that's why the comments with christine are concerning because i don't think it's the fact that she said that she was carrying a couple pounds that was not the reason I think that why it jumped out at people, and I've read some of the comments in the Christine's piece, if you heard the tone in her voice, it really, and even in her body language of the kiss and cry, I really feel like how her weight is is connected to how she feels about herself, which is connected to her confidence. Her confidence is connected to her timing. When she goes out there on the jumps, she did not lose, she did not fall on those jumps because she was out of shape or overweight. Like, she was letting them in practice. She didn't look winded. She was making her programs. It's usually a confidence thing with her. She was hitting the jumps in practice before she did her program. And then once she made mistakes in her program in practice, she started missing things in the, at the end of the program because then she feels bad about herself and loses her confidence and what's going on. And it's like so cyclical with her. And I think that in the first show that we did, I'm going to pry for this for you. You said that you have something that you think is really important for her at this time. And I've talked with a number of lady skaters about this, including two on your list, and they both agreed. So I want you to give your full RX to so, Gracie. So I think she needs to leave home. And I say that in air quotes because she, like, left, moved to California, but still lives with her mom. And at 21 years old, there's a certain maturity there. Um, and... There is a direct correlation between skaters leaving the nest and their improvement and just taking charge of their own career makes a huge difference in their skating. Ashley Wagner talked about it. And I mean, we see it with so many skaters. If you even a lot of times or not a lot of times, but there are like certain examples that I was thinking of where the skater It was by the time they left home, it was sort of too late in their career and they had peaked technically. So like a Rachel Flat, Mm -hmm. remember her performance at Boston Nationals? Where she was inspired and had genuine emotion and looked like she enjoyed skating. Yes. Unbelievable. Like a totally different skater. Even though she popped a jump, it was the best performance she's ever given in her life. It's not that she was bad before. I mean, she won national. She was an Olympian. But it wasn't from within before. Right. And even, I mean, in that same boat, I would put Kimmy Meisner. Mm -hmm. um, Also kind of like the end of her career when she left Pam in Delaware and went to Richard Callahan. And she had the growth spurt and all that thing. But just putting the technical stuff aside as an artistic skater. Um, And then we have Christina Gao. Mm -hmm. Another really good example. Um, look at Mariah Bell, Skate mm-hmm. America, uh, Alyssa Sisney, mm-hmm. and Jeremy Abbott, I would throw in there too. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. Um, there's just, and it, it's funny, like I talk about in my skating experience as well. Um, I mean, I wasn't really training around too many Olympians, but there was something that happened when a skater turned 16 and got their driver's license, Mm -hmm. where it was sort of the same thing. They were, I mean, we were still living at home, obviously, but like the mothers, the skating moms were no longer as involved. Some were, 
but the ones that weren't and were able, like, had work or whatever, and the skater had their license and took their own skating career into their into their own hands. Skating, like, quality of their skating totally shot up. So I think that that is what Gracie needs. Um, I also wonder, I mean, I don't think that the coaches are the problem. Like, I don't think that Frank is the problem, but I... When I see her long program this year, it just makes me wonder, like, with Frank and Lori, do they know her? We've talked so many times about this. We've talked about this so many times, and I felt like they had it figured out with the Firebird. Right. She talked about it, how Phantom of the Opera, like, didn't work, and she's not the Ice Princess. She's a lot more fiery. Why did they decide to go back to this? Well, she was invested in last season. She, her goal was to win the World Championships. And I think what happened to her was not just disappointing, I think it was traumatic. Right. And I think that was and the difference between her other failures, is that she put that... She told me when I was in L.A., she wanted to win the world championships. Mm -hmm. You know, second, you know, bottom line, second, first. But right. I agree with you that she needs to move out. I don't think they, the program is completely wrong for her. I mean, did you see right. her Bang Bang exhibition? Like, that was something that she actually enjoyed doing. She has some fire to her. Yeah. I, I don't understand why we keep... I want her to be happy and to skate with right. just what she wants to skate to. And it doesn't even matter. Like, we saw, in my opinion, some musical crap choices. But, like, if that's what's going to set her soul on fire... You can skate to anything now. Ashley's skating to any Lennox... <laughs> Adam's wearing mesh tank tops. Like, you can skate to whatever. So if she wants to skate to Bang Bang, she should it's do it. so not her. Right. And I also, like, go, you know, and what you were saying about worlds and having this goal, like, she seems like the type of skater that needs this goal. Like, she I don't needs, think she has one right now because I asked the, her about it and I didn't get a straight answer. You know, like, she needs the vision board that yes. she can wake up to. Make that... The Olympics, 2018, like 16 months away. That so, seems like very, I know she might like short-term goals, but like that seems like a pretty good one. So I think she needs to take a break from Frank as well. And I don't, Frank's a legendary coach. He's amazing. And I think right. that even he, you know, he said that he doesn't know what to do with her. He's never seen such a talent. He doesn't, yeah. you know, he doesn't know. He's talked to different reporters about this. That He doesn't know what the problem is, what the answer is. And I don't yeah. think that it's Frank's fault, but right. my personal experience in a partnership with, it reminds me a lot about Jenny. <laughs> and the thing is, is that Evie Scottfold is known for being a really negative guy. If you read Scott Hamilton's book, if you talk to Jenny, if you talk, if you listen to anything that Nancy Kerrigan said, read Inside Edge by Christine, he was known for being negative with people where he would push your buttons to make you prove him wrong, the yelling type, to the point where you could say abusive. Maybe for some people, you know, it's on that gray line of, like, hockey right. coaching. Gracie's coach before Frank is known for being a Russian version of that. Maybe times ten. A recent student left him by flipping him off, and then, uh, like, a champion student. Like, so... I think that this is a situation that if you're addicted to, or if you skate well because you're fired up because someone yells at you, and then you go to Frank Carroll, who's not going to yell at you and be really stern, I think it's really hard to, like, get yourself up in this, or, like, your psychology is all messed up with the reinforcement and all of that. I really think she needs a break from the situation. I really think, you said, Yuka Sato has forced everyone to move out away from home. I think that this might be, like, a good like break session, you know, like not saying go to her permanently, but spend a couple months there, figure your ish out and then come back and be ready. And I think that that's my prescription as well. Yeah. I had a choreographer that would scream at me and throw things and kick the boards and make me cry. And he told me that there are some people that respond well to yelling and some that don't. Yeah. And one that responded well to yelling. I do too responds well when you're when she like look at her at nationals last year when you're just like pushed up against that wall yes and yeah you've been saying this and it's just you know there's some skaters that just have it in them they're born with it to perform well under pressure like 
when it comes down to do or die, you got to rise above the rest. Mighty, mighty Boston's. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some that are just born with that and some that aren't. Yeah. And if not, you can learn, like, you can't learn it, but you can learn some of it. Yeah. It can come out a little bit better than it has been. And I think Yuka is someone that had similar problems to Gracie where she didn't put it all together until the last season. And I think that there might be some wisdom that she could... I think Gracie needs a woman right now, too. So that is kind of what I... program. Yes. And Yuka could do that with Jeremy and maybe Alyssa could help with Spit. Or who knows? You know, we there's a team there. Marina's not too far off anyway. That's what I kind of think that we need to figure out. Bring in Mishigi, you know, have him do the, whatever. So I think that, yeah, and I, I don't like her short either. So I just, I don't like, you do? Liked it. Oh yeah, I loved it. I liked it better than last year. I loved okay. her short last year. I loved it this year. I think she liked the short. The um, long is the much bigger issue, so. Right. Well, speaking of programs, what did you think of Diva Wagner's? Because... She performed Annie Lennox, The Rhythmics, Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. I was very excited when I first saw it. And but we also like we saw this at uh, the, the Metal Winners Open exhibition a couple weeks ago. And we thought, like, are there no transitions? Or is this just a show program? So like maybe she took it out. Both of those things. Um, okay. Uh, so we need to like group this together with Adam Short. Okay. Because they're the same program. Okay. They might be the same person now. Like, <laughs> so this program looked like Ann Adams just looked like it belonged on the middle of the dance floor of a gay nightclub. Have you and been to many gay nightclubs? I have, but like the European one. So this okay. is like the European gay nightclub. Okay. I have that many in the U.S., but you studied abroad in yeah. London, right? Yes. So did you go to gay clubs? Uh, yeah, I went to one called G-A-Y. I mean, how more on the nose can you get? <laughs> and could you see this program? Did yes. There? That was the thing, is that you think that British men look gay when you walk down the street until you see them in a European nightclub, and the gay men have, like, the eyeliner and the hair, and you're like, whoa, I've never felt so butch in my life. So, yeah, there are different levels. Eurogay is another the step up, yes. And these programs were that step up. <laughs> yes. But they excite me. Or Ashley certainly did, yeah. Yeah, and I said, I would say that she, she I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I like to think of skating as still like the, being uh, the perfect blend of art and athleticism. Okay. This, this was ain't no art, honey. <laughs> I thought it was exciting. I have to say though, my like girls I used to skate with, who I'm friends with on Facebook, posted this program like finally skating. I can watch. This was so entertaining. So, I, think, I agree with them, but I think that if you're going to do a program like this, you have to do it full out. She needs some transitions and some better footwork. Call I, Jeff Buttle, bring in Shaylin again, redo this. I don't think that Shaylin choreographed those zero transitions. I don't know how this program was put together. I want some receipts. I want like the video of when this was filmed, when this was created. This short. I'm sorry. I thought Jeff Buttle did the show. Oh, did he do this one? Okay. I, I don't think that Jeff did a two-foot glide for several, and there are several between different parts of this program where she is not doing anything. I love the program in concept. I love the opening movements. I love the theme, but there are no transitions, and that's going to ding her. And it might. And I was looking at her upcoming Grand Prix as Cup of China. As long as she is clean, rotates these jumps, she should win that event. But it could really ding her at the final. And I think that that is not something that you want to have happen. You need to add the transitions. And she didn't want to, she said that she didn't want to go for the layback, um, the Beelman, because she like, wants to avoid injury, save her body. So. Yeah, she said something in the Kiss and Cry, like to Raph, was like, I just want to, I need to figure out what to do with the layback and like pointing to her back. And then he started whispering mm -hmm. and we know how she likes to deny an injury so 
Loved that moment, by the way. One of the best moments I think that I have had. I was pretty happy with that. With her tweet to you? No, when she like admitted that yes, she was injured. <laughs> um, all right. So, what did you think of her long? So, I like the long very much. Do you like the long? I think I, I like it. I don't think that she skated it up the same level she did in practice. Some of the jumps were off, and I just felt like she wasn't quite in her body fully in that moment. It was a good performance, not a great mm -hmm. performance. I thought that she fought through it. What did you think? I loved it. Like, loved the whole, loved what part it. What part got you? The whole thing, like, was blown away. I haven't liked an Ashley Wagner program since Black Swan, I would say. Okay. I think she often chooses music oh, that's, like, like way it. too overdone. I mean, this Jeremy used, but I don't, wouldn't call it overdone. Um, I thought this program and this performance was, like, so hauntingly beautiful okay. and came out of nowhere. Like, I was expecting Moulin Rouge to, differ, to this music. And I didn't see that. There's a little, mm -hmm. but I thought it was fantastic. I love the dress. Shout out to Lisa McKinnon, who I think did both of her dresses. Who is Lisa McKinnon? She's like a dress designer, skating dress designer, and I think Beverly Hills. Um, what are you getting her skating it. dresses done in Beverly Hills? Well, she lives in, she's in California, so it's not going to be that far. Okay. But like, I think that usually Ashley's packaging is not the best. And like, I almost fell off the couch. Like, It's a gorgeous dress. Loved it. Loved everything about it. Now let's Shocked. talk about your little girl, Mariah Bell. Yes. Do you love her more than you love Hannah Miller? Just behind the side. I do. Okay. Mariah Bell has been my girl. Yes. I have been the biggest Mariah Bell fan mm -hmm. for a long time and was so thrilled to see her do well here. I always love her programs. I love her line, her extension. Her jump technique is textbook. Mm -hmm. like the real Lutz. She has speed. She has height. She actually, someone said the exhibition reminded her a little bit of Kimmy Meisner. Okay. And, oh, this is good. Um, Triple. I think that her, you know how Kimmy had that like textbook jump technique? She had good technique. Wait, on the, the toe was not her jump. Right, not the toe, but the other okay. jump. All right. She had pretty good yeah. jump technique. Mariah has that. Mm -hmm. I loved it. She was so good. I hope to see her at Worlds. I think that she's getting, yeah, I think that the one interesting thing about Mariah is that I think that Corey and Roheen really taught her how to train because if you've watched Mariah Bell, she was always kind of that girl with talent that would finish second or third to Gracie and in juniors at sectionals. But if you watch her now, it looks like she's really kind of taken a step up in what she thinks about where she can finish in skating yeah. and what she can accomplish. I think that Corey really taught her how to train, but everyone's so nice at Corey's rink, and they all like it's like kind of culty, is what people will tell you. It looks like she is really aggressive now, and I think that that's the difference. Is because she practiced about how she did a year ago. She didn't have the world's best practices at Skate America, but even in her run throughs, there was some. She you know fell on the triple triple. That's She's Nate. Is that a Nate? fighter yeah and i think that i think he's helping bring that out of her mm -hmm. and i think being around these more aggressive people like adam and ashley is and roth is going to help her take it up a notch give her a little bit of edge and i expect to see mariah bell on the world team this year oh yeah, so what was going on with roheen and Raph in the kissing drive what do you mean like what? So she was with Corey and Roheen, and you know Roheen like lives in Corey's basement or whatever. Yes. And now, and she left Corey, which yes. you have to imagine wasn't. I mean, they may say it was amicable, but like, was it? Is leaving your coach ever? I played the fifth. And now, but Roheen. Yes. <clears throat> Roheen Corey's made the program. Housemate sits with her in the kitchen, cry still. Well, because he made the program, and Roheen went out to her and trained her to get her ready for this competition and, like, worked with the spins and the footwork and helped. So, Buzz here, what's the gossip? What are people saying about this? You need to tell us viewers who are stuck at home, 
didn't make it to Raphael. I mean, Raheem <laughs> said that he made sure that she focused on the spins and footwork, and that's all I'm gonna say because he said that that is more important in his, you know, that Ra focuses more on the jumps is what the implication was. I think it's important to have someone that tells you to focus on other things. Yeah. Hmm. Rokeen was the bad cop with her, and I'm about to post an interview with Rokeen where he admits that he's the one that would yell at Mariah to run her programs. And he was still, he's still a part of this. He put a lot into, he said with other students that when they, if they left him or he was no longer coaching, he said, take my name off the program. But with Mariah, he put a lot into her and he is still involved. So. Well, glad he's still involved. She looked fantastic. She brought some Nancy Kerrigan realness to the ice, and I was very excited by it. What did you make of Mai Mihara at this event? Mai Mihara, Mai Mihara, one of our Japanese friends. Oh my goodness, I have Japanese fans that got me gifts here. That has been like... Ooh, what did, oh my god, you're like a famous skater. What did you get? So I'm only at up to the green tea Kit Kat level, but I was so excited. And this is like my favorite of my Japanese fans, because I have met many, but she is my absolute favorite. And she looks like Shizuka Arakawa. And she's an adult skater in Japan. So I always call her Shizuka Arakawa. Because... Oh, hello, Shizuka Arakawa is like a beauty queen. So this is a compliment. Her name is Kay, by the way. So thank you, Kay. Oh, my, I got green tea Kit Kats and matcha. Okay, just... Amazing. Are green tea Kit Kats good? Yes. I used to love green tea ice cream, but... Love but green I, tea ice cream. Love mochi ice cream. All of it. Uh, I'm very... And I'm watching that show. Um, with Mar and Honda's sister? Yes. So, with Miyu Honda. And we talked about it, and the housekeeper, all of it. So, and I was can make emotions. So, yeah, I, I feel connected to Japan. And I was interviewed for Fuji TV. So if anyone sees this clip on YouTube, like they didn't give me a link or whatever, but they interviewed me about the Japanese men. And if it shows up on Fuji TV, send me a link because I won't know otherwise. Yeah. But Mamie Hara at this event, I think she's a very talented up and comer. La, if you want to be a senior lady, you can't wear a seafoam green dress. I know. What did she skate to? Cinderella? Yeah, it looked like junior, a junior ball. Dance right. recital. Or, you know what she looked like? Remember in the 90s when people used to dress up for piano recitals? <laughs> like my sister with like the hair bow and yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do people still do that? I, I would don't think know. so. They're always like held at a church. Usually a Methodist church, by the way. Never a Catholic church. Usually it's held at like a Methodist church. In Baltimore, it was more the Episcopal church we would go to. Okay. That's no. really Episcopalian. Me. Why is it always at the at the uh, Protestant churches? What do the Catholics have against a good piano recital? Find this out for us. I want to know. Someone knows. Someone will know. I'm sure we have a bunch of people who teach piano. Longer. They're always in mass if you're Catholic, right? Also, send us your picture of your piano recital dress from the 90s. If you, if you want to... You know what you wore back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so... So her skating was lovely. She has yes. great landings and knee bend and... Her double axle technique's a little weird. Did you notice that? Yes. It's like the she has like the Tara Lipinski and Katie Denny roller skating. But she double gets it axle. done. But yeah, she lands it. Um she I just totally lost my train of thought. Oh, so you know how you have like one like random Japanese skater that wins a Grand Prix? Yes. I thought this was gonna be maybe not one. You could have multiple, like or like, the one that medal at skate. Yeah, didn't like Rika Hongo like win NHK last year? She like did really well. Maybe it was like two years ago. I don't know. You have like Kanako Murakami winning, like yeah. Rand coming out of nowhere. This is why I'm terrible at fantasy. I totally overthink it. And I'm like Kanako Murakami won five years ago. So I was actually debating whether or not Mamie Hara was going to win based on the practices, but I thought we're in the U.S. And the one thing that I noticed is that she doesn't skate as big. And she doesn't have the star power or just the wattage that an Ashley Wagner has, that a Shoma Uno has. That, and you can tell kind of based on the practices how good people are based on does your eye go to them. And if you've been in skating a long time, your eye usually goes to whoever is good. On the ice and not just who you care about, but you'll see something. And I noticed that while she was quietly doing her thing very well, when she wasn't running her program, my eye never went to her. Yeah. 
Um, Just because she doesn't have that same thing yet, you know? Right. You need to tell me these things. I listened to your interview with Jackie Wong. I have her winning. But je ne sais quoi. You know, she, it's like the Paulina problem that Paulina Edmonds had at Nationals last year. It's why I knew she wasn't going to win. You know, she, she's not. She doesn't have that thing. And Mariah Bell has it. And she doesn't have that extra star quality yet. Maybe she'll get it. But I, I don't think that she had. No. You know what? Mao Sada had the star quality from the womb. So I don't know. Maybe she just does not have that same zhuzh, you know, that we like. Mao Sada here, I think that she still has the star quality. When you see her skate, her skating skills were so far above everyone else here especially in the practice session. I thought she was a little slow, especially in the short program. Um, the, she jumped much better in practice than she did in competition. She, oh, interesting. I feel like she loses some of her confidence when she's not going for the triple axel. Yeah. There's also sometimes you see when you have this triple axel that you can, like, she's fixate on that yes. one main element. You see this a lot in pairs, I think, where, like, they can all totally do a triple toe and then they miss it. Where you like fixate so much on the one element that then you miss it, and but you land everything else because you're not thinking and your body's just doing it. When she doesn't have that, we might see this with Tukumishiva too. When you don't have that one thing to fixate on, she she is messing up other things, which she really can't afford to do. She just doesn't have the technical content to keep up with those other ladies. Yeah, especially because she doesn't have a triple-triple. I asked her, she said she's not really working the flip toe anymore, which she used to do the flip toe and actually get it around. Yeah. But she doesn't do that anymore. Um, and she's Did saying... Flip, flip loops in practice? Yeah, triple. but they never credit her for the flip loop. It's a very rare day that they... A hard combo. I can't even imagine. And I really feel like they're too hard on the loop as the back end of a combo. Yeah. They're very strict, and it's it's a little over. And unfortunately, because of that, we miss a lot of really exciting. I feel like a flip loop is so much more exciting than a flip toe. Yeah. Uh, Any combo is. Yeah, but we don't see that because of how they judge the loop jump. And then you're gonna get skating protocol being like it's not around so just saying <laughs> but let's can we talk about her costume because i'm can i was really confused i'm used to defending my own comments <laughs> or just, this woman came up to rohim ward and she said why is Maosada's program why is her costume phallic they said it was in the skating lesson and i said whoa not they law said it don't blame me. I don't know why. I was kind of taken aback and just kind of laughing because I was just going along with the joke, to be honest. I didn't really see it. I need you to explain this. Okay, she got a new costume. Yeah, so but it looked just had, like the old one. She got new, well, it's different. She lost her penis. What, okay. what, you can't just say that no. word, La. Oh, sorry. It's not, it's, she lost the phallic part. Um, I'm going to try to pull, show you this on my phone, but, okay. So this was from Finlandia. All Do you right. see at the bottom? Okay. Oh. Oh. It is very similar, but it just points down now. It is very similar, but. So she must have known. Someone must have told her. Yes. I mean, quick turnaround, though. Beautiful dress. It actually kind of reminds me of, um. The Sasha Cohen dress. That oh, was the good one from 2010 Nationals? Yes. When she needed to lose those two extra pounds? Yes. Please. We have <laughs> this. Do you remember that kiss and cry moment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still shocked by it all the time. By the way, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Sasha. Um... And I'm going to go, if you want to go see Sasha Cohen honored, Ice Theater of New York this weekend is having an event Friday night. They're, they're honoring Sasha and Evan. They're having a performance. I'm going. And, and Gary Beacom performing. He's and Gary Beacom. And is it Michael Solonoski performing? And where are you? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, uh, can we go back to Gracie and Ashley for one sec? Sure. Uh, what haven't we talked about with Gracie and Ashley? Um, all right, and the skating protocol on yes. Instagram, yes. great account to follow. Props mm -hmm. to Mark Lee for that. Um, okay, so he posted something that I didn't realize, but Gracie and Ashley were tied in technical. Yes. And clearly, Ashley's first, Gracie's fifth, 
difference was in PCS. And just, under-rotated jumps, clearly. Okay. Just goes to show you what a difference it makes when you skate to something you want to be skating to, something you believe in. Got okay. It. So, I think okay. we might have exhausted this. <laughs> yes. So. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the men because... I have to say that I, I don't know if you've ever seen him skate in person. I don't know which events you were at at the World Championships. But Shoma Uno is the most incredible thing to watch live. And right. it's one of the things that I talked about uh, to the Japanese press. Because if you try to interview Shoma Uno backstage, he's like whispering. You cannot really understand even what he's saying. And there are so many members of the Japanese media there that are crowding around him that you have to be like aggressive. Like, I feel like you're getting on a train in China where you have to like elbow and knee people to, like, to try to get, like, and Show Uno is not projecting his voice. And he's so quiet, but then he gets on the ice and he's like giving you the Daisuke Takahashi realness. And some the messed up hair. Love I it. Loved it. I would love some Shoma Uno hair. Oh my goodness. Oh, what kind of hair product are they using? What, and the carrot, like, I don't know. I have bushy hair. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still figuring out my ancestry on Ancestry.com to find out if I've got, like, the Jufro in my past. Because my hair gets, like, wide bushy, so. If you do, I can help you and Jason Brown. We'll do you think Brown. Priscilla yes. Human thinks that Jason got the carrot dream? It's because she thinks he looks so much better with his hair <laughs> and Skate America and Free Skate. Maybe. It did look better. <laughs> He, he really gels it for his his um, competitive programs. Okay. But if he got a keratin, he wouldn't have to do that. All right. Anyway, show me. So good. Although his long program here, mm -hmm. well, his long in general. Okay. So his quad flips, like, unreal. He totally can be one of the best in the world, like, He's right up there with, at this point, it looks like with Javi and Hanyu. I worry a little bit about if he peaks too soon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he wasn't perfect here, but we saw, I was at Men's It Worlds. Thank you very much. I think we sat together. No, we Glad did. So all for you. Um, we did not. He, oh, wait, you, you sat there for like a group. We saw right. the Titanic together. Um, we weren't together for like the final bit, but he like totally collapsed there. So you, I mean, just makes you wonder if he's pacing himself. I have to say though, like halfway through this program, when that woman comes on and I said this in another time we recorded, like, it just sounds like a villain from a Disney movie, like suddenly start singing. Like if like- Did Cruella it bother me as much in person as it does on video? Okay. I it think just, it's, it might be because you're so wowed by his skating in person. You're like, oh, who cares what he could skate to? I, I think that, like, the headless spin when he does it at the end. The one thing that I noticed, though, was that, so, Mike was watching skating at home, and he was like, he thinks he's a skating expert. So, like, he'll start saying things like, well, you know, Adam and Jason, they really need the quads. They're not going to know if they don't have the quads. That's what I... Uh, he thinks he's an expert. He, he's all about the quads. He's like, I want to see some quads. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right. Got it. So, he, he, I was like, the cantilever moment is coming. It didn't have the same impact because he fell on the triple axle right before it. So, like, that's like the moment in any Shoma Uno program is like towards the end when he does the cantilever. But here, it really lost its impact. You disagreed with me last time I talked about this. You are like, it's in every program. And I was like, it was so cool. It is so cool, but he does do it. But I think I'm just weirded out by him skating to, like, Ladies in Lavender. Like, that is just, I I don't know. Yeah. But I love, the, I love the music and the program. You do you, honey. Adam Rapon's in a, in a mesh shirt. I love the costume, and his, especially in his long... Um, I have, I have this fantasy that I'm going to go on Fashion Police with Joan Rivers. You know she's dead, right? <laughs> I know, this is why it's a fantasy. And Kelly Osborne. She's also not on the show anymore. Purple hair, this is why it's a fantasy. But you know in the show when they're like, best dress nominee. Yes. Show Uno, best dress nominee. <laughs> you go. <laughs> Who do you watch the E channel? Are you watching the Kardashians? Eh, I turn it on occasionally. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. So, Shoma Uno, the one thing that I noticed, though, is that even though he worked with Alex Arashev over the summer, his hip is still opening quite a bit. On the really? I didn't think I, after you said this, I went back and watched his long program again, and I didn't see it. I thought he watched- checked the short, though, he does it. The short, you can see. It's a problem in practice, even. Some of these jumps, he really, and it takes, like, a real deep curve, and it goes around. Yeah. So, and I don't, you mean he's opening his shoulder? He's opening his up the shoulder and the hip instead of stopping it. And that's, you know, and you see a lot of times it's like he falls or he, you know. Right. It's going to be a, it's a, something he has to fight because his landings get a little bit scary. They think especially there could be a situation between bronze and silver. You know, GOEs could come into mm-hmm. play. You know, st- you know, things yeah. could be close. There are a lot of top men. You never know what Patrick Chan's going to do. You don't know what Javi's going to do. Shoma, he's right in it, but... There are a lot of, there's a lot of talent, and I think the men's competition, is, the men's field is really deep. Speaking of quads and men, Jason's quad, Adam's quad, whose was around, whose wasn't, what is your opinion? So, okay, so the wording of the this rule is mm-hmm. quarter turn or less, or less than a quarter turn. Yes. It's less- supposed to be... A quarter turn or less, but it's really been interpreted as less than a quarter turn. So it's like this gray area where like what is less than a quarter turn? It seems like almost it would be an easier rule if it was like you need to land a clean jump. Mm -hmm. So I sort of, I mean, I thought that, I mean, I thought Jason should have gotten it. I didn't, I mean, like the difference between the short and the long when he landed it. I burst into tears. I had a moment. I was so happy for him. Um, you cry? You Over can't. skating? I had this conversation yesterday at yoga where people were talking about when was the last time they cried. And I was like, Sunday afternoon watching figure skating. Like, duh. Is that weird or something? And everyone like looked at me like I had three heads. And I was like, yeah, I just shared too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding. So that's like where it's so iffy for me. And it seems like that shouldn't even be the rule. Okay. What did you think? I think that the rule is a little bit crazy. Uh, and it, I think that Jason's from most angles looked within the quarter. Right. It looked like right on the edge of like, yeah. I was trying to think of like a clock and like, which, and I'm you know looking and it's Jason's is like really borderline. It's like really close Adams, I thought, was definitely under. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts, but Adam got credited, and Jason didn't, and... I thought Jason should have gotten it. Like, give him the benefit of the doubt. The program was so beautiful. Like, both of the programs, fall, land the quad. Mm-hmm. He's just so good. Like, that um, hydro hydroplaning to the Russian split. Mm-hmm. Sam Smith, I just ate it all. Like, I forgot where I was. Like, I forgot that I was in my kitchen watching him. It was just, like, sucked me in so much. Well, what did you think of Adam? <sighs> all right. We need to go back to the short. Okay. I'm, can I quote you here? Oh, my goodness. You, you, I guess you have to now. I think this might be with something that should have... Did it, you didn't intend for it to be repeated. So, of course, you want to. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I think it was after Nationals last year in his Beatles medley. Oh, dear. And you said. Oh, dear. And I quote, this, that was the most homosexual thing I have ever seen. And I lived through the Johnny Weir, Rudy Galindo era. Wow, I think this took the cake. <laughs> that costume first, was that even allowed? <laughs> One of the nine judges said that it was not allowed, by the way. And gave him a deduction? Yeah, but he didn't get the deduction overall because I think you need a majority. So, okay. Like, can you wear white beaters? Clearly you didn't watch the interview with Adam Rapon that I posted today where he talked about how he wanted to show some shoulder once oh. he read the rule. Today! Cut me some slack, you posted it today. Hours um, ago. Okay. Well, he was in a mesh white beater. So and the judge could say that he's showing too much nudity with the mesh is okay. the thing. 
that program was like straight Euro trash gay nightclub. Okay. But I just like want to know the dynamic with like Raph seems like this very like masculine Russian coach. Like granted he's a figure skating coach, but like still. And then Adam with like this program. I just like want to know what this is like in the ring. He coaches so, Adam and Ashley on a daily basis. He has to have a sense of humor. I mean, come on. Yes. You've been there. What's it like? So he's moody, but fun. Uh, he's entertaining. He might get mad at you during your run through and go eat his lunch because you're not skating well. And then he hopes you're skating well by the time he comes back. He doesn't really have set lessons. He kind of like picks and chooses. And then well, because I'm there, he's going to be putting on a show because he definitely, I've never met a Russian who didn't love the camera, but Raphael is always entertaining. He's got that Bella Caroli kind of quality. He, he, I think that Raphael and you is going to be like a well-known skating coach. He's going to be like Carlo Fossi, Frank mm-hmm. Carroll. He's a mainstay player. He, he's a main character in skating now. Like, we are going to know Raphael. We're going to know how to spell Aratunian, the yeah. whole kit and caboodle. Like, that, yeah, we have to practice that. We're going to debate if it's, you know, the Y or the I. We're going to find out what Roth thinks about He's a main character. Um, I think that with Adam, the one thing I noticed is that he's a fabulous performer. Mm-hmm. But Jason has that star quality at yeah. the end of the day where he takes it up another notch. Right. And even... I mean, t- what do you think? The depth of edge. It's yeah. like the skating skills... Continue. Sorry to interrupt. Adam's crossovers, there aren't as many of them, but they still, as he used to too, he has learned to mask this better, but they're still not fantastic. Uh, You know, the skating skills are not at the level of Shoma Uno or the top men. And Jason's are improving. So, you know, you just kind of wonder. Yeah. I mean, so when you, like, you've talked about those crossovers in the past and, like, mm-hmm. the back going up yes. and down, pumping, and I never really agreed with that. Um, so I was watching it, and I, like, finally was able to articulate what I think it is because I don't see the pumping that you talked about. It's that he isn't pushing off of both feet. Okay. It's not, like the right and then the left, that under push, he doesn't get... He doesn't get the second push on the crossover. Right. So he doesn't gain speed. So it doesn't matter if he does one or ten, he's going the same speed, and that is, like, a lack... And I don't think they look bad. Like, I know you do, but he's not doing them correctly to gain speed. So it's... I guess in that way, it does look weird. Um, in Afternoon of a Fawn, when he's having a lyrical moment and he's going around the right. end of the rink, it looked really jarring. Yeah. it's. I think it's more that he doesn't, because he's not using them to gain speed, than the actual movement of his body. And this has taken me, like, years to pinpoint. Okay. At though, what did you think of the long program? I like it. I think that he did it more in practice. So... Ashley tweeted that Adam told that like she told Adam that he stopped being a bird mid program and he told her that she stopped doing her spins. So <laughs> tweeting up a storm. She she was, yes. I don't think it was smart for her to um admit that she doesn't do transitions. She admitted that on Twitter? Yes, when she was talking about Jin Boyang, she's like now, I know that I'm the queen of not doing transitions, but this program has zero transitions. It's like, girl, deny, deny, deny. <laughs> Roff didn't like it when I asked him about the transitions, if you saw that interview. I'll watch tonight. Uh, <laughs> what did you watch of my coverage? All of it, I thought. Did you not no, see I... Raphael's look when I asked him about Ashley and the two foot glides? Yeah. I guess not. Um, okay. I totally loved Adam's long. Like I thought almost the same as Ashley's cause they're the same person now. Um, like blew me away, came out of nowhere. 
reminded me of like classic Adam back when he won Junior Worlds and seemed to have like a lot more lyrical, elegant style to him. Um, even two years ago, he sort of had that in his long, uh, like creative. It, it's so, you see so many bird programs in skating, like the Swan, Swan Lake Firebird, that to see something that just had never been done before and was like so creative and beautiful and unique, like props to him. Totally loved it. Great job bringing in, um, was it Benji Schwimmer? Benji Schwimmer. Um, and I also, so I get um, Google alerts for figure skating. I'm a real nerd over here. <laughs> and it actually got some, like, picked up some dance coverage. Oh. And it was on, like, some dance blog or something that was like, you have to look at this figure skating program created by Benji Schwimmer. And I was like, yeah, skating, way to get out there. All right. Well, I like that. Yeah, I really like the um, part after the triple axel where he does the triple axel into the bird section. That is my favorite part of the program. I really like it. I think it can continue to grow throughout the season. Apparently, it was like two weeks old, a week and a half old. So I, I liked it. Only going to improve. So good. What did you think? Uh, I have to say, Bo Yang Jin, quickly, I saw some improvement. I think he needs to do way more of the Spider-Man. If your music is going to have sirens in it, you better be giving us the superhero the entire performance and not just for the first opening seconds and the costume. You have to go full out. If your music is going to have sirens in it, you better be superhero from start to finish. I better think I'm watching a Pixar film. And <laughs> it, no, it really didn't do it for me. I did see some improvement, but I don't want this to become the Arena Slutskaya thing where we talk about how awful it was before that it's improved that we start to like judge him on the same level as Patrick Chan or Han Yu because that started to happen before. I don't know if the, the Chinese Federation has the skills of Russia in marketing and politicking, but I'm just saying. I mean, it's not the same without the quads. I was like kind of surprised to see him miss those quads. I had him second in fantasy. I did too. Because you knew that if he landed the quad lots, it was a game right. changer. I don't think he landed it. Guess not. But, um, okay, so he kind of reminds me of my little basic six skater that I coached. Not a compliment. No. She's adorable, but she's also just turned six years old. Um, where she, like, can't really do crossovers yet. Like, she can do them, but they're not kind of like Adam, gaining speed and used to... <laughs> They're not at all like Adam, but same concept where I can't, like when she has her one minute program and I want her to fill the ice, I can't give her crossovers because they don't go anywhere. So I tell her to just like skate, just like push and stroke and get across the ice and it's going to look a lot better that she's moving. And that's kind of the skating that he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's just like not doing crossovers, but just like stroking and pushing and you're like, you can't really do that at this level. Like, you need some footwork and some crossovers and some skating. Yeah. This isn't hockey, but, um, yeah, look for that. There's, like, a couple – he's not on two feet, but it's, like, a couple things where he's just, like, pushing from one foot to the other. <laughs> well, speaking of skating, what did you make of the top few pairs? What did you think of Julianne and Charlie? Um, I mean, the mistake in the short, but – their long was so good. I mean, they were like the class of the field here. Um, it's nice to see them do so well, and they're going to be a real threat. Like, You know that they're long is... I know that you made fun of me for having people, but you know that they're long was done by two of our favorite people. Um, yes, because I watched this interview. Um, Marie France... No. Yes. And not, but not Patrice. No, David Wilson. I knew that. I watched the interview. The Shay did the short with someone else. I didn't understand the name when she told me. It was very Quebecois. I was nodding. I thought the short was a little, um, the music was a little strange. It's just like, it's almost like a taste thing for me with that kind of like cutesy program. Like We're not, not happy people. We're not up-tempo like that. Is that like it like I never like those kinds of programs no I hated that Jeremy short that Benji Schwimmer did that was like big band we're not big band people and when Jason did it I you didn't like it you lived in New York it. too long for big band that's not you 
I'm so glad you figured this out about me. You're not a big band person. You were skating to Amelie. Right. I do, like, in general, kind of like depressing music. You're lyrical. Ann Jensen will get very mad at you. Because we always like the Jeremy music that she says is like skating while somber. So we love that Muse. You're into Muse. You want that. You would skate to the Ashley music. Yeah. I had to look up Muse. This had been bothering me for a really long time. But like, you know that Muse is this rock band and I had some of their songs on my playlist that I used to go running to. Um, and like Kate Hudson had the baby with the um, front man, front man of the band. And I don't was like, know who the front man is. I know Muse from Megan Matt- Hamill and Jeremy Abbott. She had her. She had the second son, and they were engaged, and then they broke it off. Why do I always end up talking about random celebrities on this? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I was like, this can't be the same like Exogenesis Symphony as this rock band. It can't be the same drive me nuts and then I finally looked it up and sure enough doesn't sound like any of the rest of their albums but it's them it's the same oh. Kate Hudson baby daddy all right <laughs> fun fact look at you <laughs> bringing in the world view uh because <laughs> he is my hometown boy all right long program costume best dress nominee <laughs> I loved his short program I hated the long program music. I hated it. The ending got better, but the beginning, uh, such a snooze. He needs to spend some time with Raphael and get aggressive like Mariah Bell because he was nervous here. And there was no reason for... I mean, he needs to believe that he belongs. I thought that we solved this last season. I think we need to remind him. Um. Okay, so I didn't realize that he was, like, such a good spinner. And... <laughs> His spins were Where so Where have you been? Good. That headless scratch spin. Yeah. So good. Oh, but you know who's not a good as good of a spinner that I noticed? Yeah. Well, just one spin. This is going way back. Sorry. Shoma Uno's. Um, is it called legless broken leg sit spin? Well, we don't like those broken leg anyway. But he's like not doing the broken leg thing. It's like a sprained <laughs> leg. And it just, like, wasn't a good look. You're not a fan of broken limbs. You accused one skater of having cerebral palsy this weekend. So, you know what? You can... To ever be repeated. <laughs> oh, so you can repeat what I say, but we cannot... Yeah, okay. So, moving on, I have to say that Haven and Brandon, you talk about, like, broken legs. She had, like, a three-foot bandage and looks as good as ever. So... Right. It, well, I didn't like the program as much as I liked The Lion King because that really like touched me in like a, a Rene Roca kind of place that only Jill Trenary has ever really accomplished prior to the end of that Lion King program that I loved so much. But they look fantastic. And yeah. I, I know that you were a big fan of their interview. Yes, you I love. thought it was really interesting what he had to say about going to work with Marina and just becoming a stronger skater. And I mean, you can just see that they like, it's like they lost no time. They picked up exactly where they left off. Um, they're not the most dynamic team to watch. Like, I think that Marissa and Mervin and even Alexa and Chris are just a lot more dynamic. It could be the program, too. Um, but they're consistent. And, like, that's just something U.S. pairs needs right now, or any pair in this event, for that matter. Um, yeah. I, Makes you wonder if certain other pair teams that are out injured, if the non-injured male is working on his skating the way Brendan Fraser did. You are tough. You're tough on the male skaters. We're going to do a judging episode. I think we're going to do pairs, different Olympics, and we can... Yeah. Yeah. Um, We need to judge 94 and 2002. We'll do judging videos. Moving along. Yeah. In the lasso lift. Was it a lasso in your opinion? Was it not? There's a lot of debate about this. So I was watching these videos. Um, disclaimer, I was not a pair skater. I didn't have pair training. So I think I know what I'm talking about, though. So the wording is that the girl needs to, when she goes up mm-hmm. over the guy's head, she needs to rotate. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yes. So when I was watching these videos, well, first of all, Tarasova and Morosov aren't doing a lasso. Mm-hmm. I don't see how this could ever be judged as a lasso. It looks like a star lift. Like, 
maybe the proper technical term is like reverse star, but it doesn't look like a lasso at all. It's hand to hand. Yeah, press. Well, yeah. That Marissa and Mervin were the only ones to do the actual. Marissa actually rotated above Mervin's head. And then they came down. Right, which is such a shame. I mean, they look so much better here. Like, I thought if that lift had, if that, that mistake hadn't happened in the short, they could have been third Listen, over. They look like they could get together by nationals. We're, we're incrementally improving here. They just want to. Best nominee. Best dress nominee. <laughs> So, I always thought you'd be friends with Marissa. You know, you remind me of her in some, like, weird way. I, I don't know. You think I'd be friends with Joan Rivers? <laughs> yes. I did. Anyway, Marissa Rivers went to Penn. Yeah, I don't think we'd be friends with her. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I always found her annoying. Uh, let's move on. Um, in the ice dance event, what did you make of the top few teams here? What do you uh, what do you make of all of it? The Shibutani's, Hubble and Donahue. What do you think? All right, the Shivs. Um, so I thought that their short dance, like that mashup, so they like came out of hiding. It felt yes. like Even they though, okay. Oh, Maya is okay. So Yuki Sagusa told me that Charlie White is not just opinionated on skate. On, on Ice Network that he's always been opinionated and that he and Meryl like purposely tried not to be controversial and I think I used to tease them maybe on a couple years ago and some people were, thought I was so scandalous back then the Shibutani's have that same problem in press conferences where actually certain reporters have groaned uh, not me by the way I like was shocked I'm like you work for like a very like USFS publication you can't groan so they were never going to tell you anything like we remotely. just want to state our best. Yeah, they're not going to say anything remotely interesting. Right. But this, they clearly were strategic and, like, didn't want to be shown until they were 100%. And I think that makes them brilliant. And yeah. I think that makes them good chess players. And I'm impressed. Apparently, Maya Shibutani is running that show. And, and Alex is the more creative one. Wow. I wouldn't have called that. Yuki Sugusa, you got agent to the stars, forward. told us this. Yeah. Put your best foot forward. Don't go out there sick half-assing it. Anyway. Especially when it's a non-favorable panel. Also, it's totally normal to start your season at Skate America. So even though it felt like they were coming out of hiding, it was like it's normal to start there. Um, think about... 10 years ago when we didn't have, or two years ago, we didn't have like so much streaming online content where we couldn't watch Lombardia Trophy. Anyway, not the point. I, okay, so they're short here, totally unexpected, surprised me. And I, they faked us out because those Shibutani's, although they'll never admit this, they said that they were skating to Frank Sinatra, so we thought it was the Shivs going to do a swing. You know I was rolling my eyes when I read that. I will admit it. All right, I saw Maya in like the long dress. She comes out in pants with like glitz, and then there's Jay-Z. There are two songs playing on top of each other. Not sure I like that that much. Maybe re-edit the music, Alex, a little bit. Um, I don't know about that little part, but I love the whole, it's unexpected, it's exciting, it's fresh. I think that they need to let go a little bit more and really, like, get into it. Um, overall, it was, I think, hard to appreciate the short dance as a whole event because there was absolutely no one in the crowd because the Cubs were playing and everyone just left after the ladies. And I actually really felt for the skaters because between Upper Great Lakes and the Cubs playing, there was no one in. Obviously, no one has ever thought the Cubs were going to win anything, apparently, if I know anything about baseball. I saw a baseball movie where they talked about I saw one of those, like, movies about sports when I was, like, nine. I don't remember, but they, they made a joke about the Cubs never winning, so I remember that. I remember they don't win. And, um, by the way, Christine Brennan. <laughs> Love you, Christine. All my oh. heart. Who went to the wrong arena. <laughs> there are two arenas? There was, like, a Rosemont arena. She was speaking to all these women when she wasn't yelling at my boyfriend on the phone over his political views. Um, she was then... I um, she was going to the wrong arena and I tweeted about it and she was like, gonna kill me. 
Um, she was asking Frank Carroll about baseball and trying to like put Gracie Gold's season into baseball terminology. And to watch Frank like struggle with the answer was hysterical. And then he had a good line with her about, you know, which hockey team was going to win the Super Bowl. And yeah, I mean, I was like, Christine, come on. Come, Christine, you're at figure skate. Didn't you write Inside Edge? Like what? <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, come on. I thought she was the one that told us that none of the men in skating were going to know about the baseball references. Yeah. But anyway, I don't remember what I was even talking about before that. Shibs. Oh, the Shibs! Love the Shibs! Oh. Love both programs, by the way. Dance. I wanted her to switch costumes with Madison Hubble for the short dance. I okay. wanted to, like, watch this program ten more times and then give my opinion, but I thought that was a really good sign, because usually I'm kind of one and done with dance. Like, I see the material, and then I'm good until Worlds, where I just check the results. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like, wanted to watch this again. I really like the short dance. I like the free as well. What I noticed about the free is the music is so quiet and unexpected for them, because it's, like, kind of artsy, that yeah. you really pay attention to their skating more. Yeah, and they're such good skaters, such good Twizzlers. Look, it's like plus five GOE when they do that. I really think that their program is special. I think that they have a good shot at being in the mix this year once again. I liked it more than the Coldplay. Best Dress nominee. Um, I was worried that after seeing uh, Virtual Moyer and the French mm -hmm. that the Shibs were going to have a hard time competing with them. And after this free dance, it's going to be a really interesting Grand Prix final world championship because they're right up there with those. They two got teams. a 112, which was higher than what I believe Virgin Moyer got at the first event. So interesting, very excited to watch the next couple of events. Quickly, what did you think about Hubble and Donahue here? Um, I mean, I didn't see sort of what we've talked about in our other um, episodes. I didn't see a whole lot of changes. Um, I Back to Charlie White. Thought, like, that came out of nowhere. He's such a good commentator. Um, and once he s sort of started um, picking out some things about the music, I found myself agreeing with him. Mm -hmm. And then in the hip-hop section of the Going Back to Short Dance, uh, what I said before is that when I see, think of hip hop and it's so stationary and they are on two feet, they're doing hip hop, they're doing it better than other teams, but it's still so stationary to me that skating needs to move in order to get points and they really need to move mm -hmm. and they're not doing that here. And that's where I saw, I think that's where they lost ground to Bobrova and Solovia. All right. So here's what I think. I appreciate that they're doing the more, the most authentic hip hop. Yeah. As much as I know about authentic hip hop, they're doing, it's less lyrical, it's more hip hop. And I appreciate the idea of doing the thing through the decades with the music mashup. Right. However, there are some ideas that are wonderful in theory, and then you see it in person a couple of times, and you go, hmm. So it's the kind of thing that not everyone loves and not everyone's loved it for long enough that I wonder if they need to take out some of the music edits. And I think I like the turn down for what I like the push it. I don't think baby got back should be in a nice dance program at the world championships. I just don't, I think they need to take out some of the music edits. We can jump 20 years. Maybe we don't have to go every decade. Because I think it sounds like a cheerleading dance team mix that you would see on ESPN with Amanda Borden commentating. And I think that they're a more sophisticated team than that. Uh, I saw some more speak. Lose any quality in the dance if they take out some of the cuts. Yeah. Music cuts are never a good thing. They cheapen, a music cuts I'm cheapen you. Yeah. Haven't we learned? Didn't we learn this from Max Aaron's Lion King already? You know what? We relearn the same lessons again and again and again in life. Okay? We just do. You know, what did my, the great Maya Angelou say about music edits? Don't do them. Any, I don't know what she said, but... Don't do too many. Don't do too many. Um, I think in the free that they need to orchestrate the end music and maybe blend it with like a piece. Have Hugo Schwinard and David Wilson like come up with something? Because I right. feel like the music, it like you go on this journey and the end doesn't feel like the proper resolution. 
Right. And I think that Ice Dance is going to be super competitive this year, and every detail and every point is going to count. Especially this team, because they could finish ahead of Piper and Paul, they could finish ahead of Kathleen and Linote, or they could finish at the bottom of the heap. And I think that they're going to have to keep pushing forward. It's going to be a real competition. Um, Bobrova and Soloviev, I don't see a lot of content in their programs. They have some good speed, but their programs were pretty empty. And I have to say that Elena Ilyidik and Ruslan Zaganshin, I'm really getting frustrated with this team because I know that people really are on the Elena Ilyidik bandwagon, and I've loved her for years, but this partnership is just, it's, she doesn't look happy, and they don't look like they're going anywhere, progressing, and a lot of the different commentators were saying the same thing here, that they're just disappointed in this team. And I think that when you're doing something so similar to what Charlie White and Meryl did, which was such an iconic program, you really have to give it 110%, 200%, and to me... It just fell short, and the choreography wasn't special, and it just... It wasn't It wasn't Bollywood. It wasn't... I think that type of Indian dancing is called Bhangra, and I... And Full of surprises. There are lots of Indians at Penn. We learned these things. So, I didn't learn how to do fantasy skating, apparently, but um, it, was, it didn't have that movement. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be called that, but... There's a dance place in New York, a boutique dance place called Dunya Fit, and I'm actually in the promo video. Why have you never brought me there? Because um, I only went once, and then I got recorded doing the Indian dancing, and they made it into the promo video. I'll send it to you. It's on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I'm going to post this for our viewers, uh, bottom of the link here. Uh, maybe I'll include... That, I did more Indian dancing in Dunya Fit than they do in that program. Like, going like this and wearing the costumes isn't enough. They, especially after... And it wasn't a cute costume. Companies. Like, you need to do the head and all that. And they just didn't do it at all. Yeah. It was so half-assed. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, what, you already said penis. I mean, come on. Come on. I'm trying to class it up a bit. And you're just, you know, fighting me every step of the way. Wrapping it up, what was your MK moment of the week here at Skate America? Uh, can I have two? Yes. Um, Jason Brown, which we I don't think we gave enough credit to, coverage to. Such a moment. Long program. So good. And Mariah Bell. Just moment of the week. What was yours? I have to say that I think that Mariah Bell... Well, to, seeing Ashley do the opening choreography in practice... But Mariah, competitively, Mariah Bell really brought it, as well as Shoma Uno in person. But Mariah Bell, seeing her do that moment, I think it totally changed the game in U.S. ladies skating. I think she was running to be about fourth or fifth, and she's in this for this year, winning the free skate decisively triple here. Triple S, triple toe. Yeah, so we have to remember that when you go out there and you are having your moment and it is your time, you step it up like Mariah Bell, land your quad like Jason Brown, hold an edge, and look sexy. Bye, guys.